Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and today we're going to be working on an atmospheric, kind of very loose wheat field. This is so easy, any beginner can do. It's just wet on wet and wet on damp. We're splattering some paint, we're having fun, we're getting loose. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon. On Thursdays, I have exclusive tutorials there weekly that comes with um, downloads that go with it. And don't forget to hit the, hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna go over supplies. We have a piece of Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper I taped down with scotch tape. This is a seven by 10 inch piece. Um, I have just a piece of cheap old cardboard here. And I'll go over my paints. I have um, Cadmium Yellow Deep and Van Dyke Brown we'll be using mostly today. I'm gonna throw in some Prussian Blue. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna use probably orange. And Maybe some quick aquanome magenta and some olive green, but we'll see. Um, I've got my two water jars, my paper towels, and my brushes. And I'm going to move the paints aside because we might be using, might be lifting the paint, the uh, paper up and down like that. So I'm going to start by getting the paper damp with this. I have a Princeton number no. six brush. It's a fairly big, floppy kind of brush. I'm just going to go across the page here with some water. As you can see here, go across the whole entire thing, just like so. Get it pretty damp. And now I'm going to flood in the paper with some golden yellow. I've got some nice yellow here. That's that cadmium yellow deep. I'm just going to throw in some yellow, just like so leaving like a space in this area which would be the sun kind of coming through so I'm just going to fill this in with this yellow you can kind of go all the way down if you want to just lift up your paper it kind of bleeds nicely down I'm going to get this paint a little looser I'm just going to fill that in this nice yellow maybe a little more over in here Just like so. And now we're going to be adding in some of the, the golden brown color. So we take that Van Dyke brown, go loosely, get this pretty wet and loose. Add in some yellow. Just like that. I'm going to dab some in my paper towel, see if I like that. And we're just going to start to whisk up color with the brush and the tip just like that and we can add a little red into maybe maybe a little brilliant orange whisking up like that but I'm getting it fairly loose really loose to see I'm just going to be building up this um, wheat field. I'm just putting up some marks just like this. Just like swoosh, pushing it up, upward. And I'm going to keep adding in. A little bit of the red, a little bit of the orange, and some of that Van Dyke brown, that yellow. Just, I'm just taking the tip of my brush and just pushing it upward like that. And I'm just going to grab some more of that Van Dyke brown itself with some yellow, so it's a golden color. Putting more of that color right up in here. Bigger strokes. Just like that. Some more big ones like this up here. You can also, if you think it's too brown, you can just take your brush and just lift up some of the paint. Like that. And go 
back and add some more of that golden yellow color. Playing around with the, the yellows and the browns. Just like that. Some more yellow golden color. And now I'm going to mix up some really even deeper colors. I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. Um, I have a Princeton 8 long round and I'm going to mix up, take the Van Dyke brown. It's a little too wet so I'm going to take some of the water up. I might add some of this Prussian blue to it. Get a really dark brown. Deep dark brown. So we have the Van Dyke brown. A little of the red. Let's get in reddish brown. A little yellow. Just mixing it up a nice darker color here. And, and creamy kind of consistency, like less water. Again, we're going to put some strokes, simple strokes going up. Just like this. Wispy strokes. And you can kind of connect them like they're like wheat. See the strokes connecting. Simple strokes going up, connecting. Again, up, and then you can put some little, it's like the wheat connecting here. So they're just like a stroke up and then little lines going outward from that stroke. Now it's going to start to bleed, which is fine. That's what we want to do. But it's a darker color. I'm adding some red to that. Some orange. Get in the brown family that you like. Just want a deeper color. Again, strokes. Making these wispy strokes. It's a lot of fun. Simple. You're just kind of pushing the brush upward, crisscrossing it. And you can make some nice skinny ones. Add some more brown. We're going to keep building up layers. I might even add a little. So I'm making blue, basically black. Blue, red, and yellow. Get this black tone to brown. Just keep wisping up. Put some darker splotches over here. We're just throwing in some dark splotches. See how I'm just kind of pushing it around like that? You can mix in some black if you want to. I have some blackish colors. Get real deep in there. We're going to just be building up these layers and layers. You can go back in and add a little lighter browns up in here. Whisping up some layers here. But as we build, we're going to build up darker and darker tones. So I'm just going to keep adding in. If I didn't, I feel like there's just more too much yellow in here. I'll add a little more simple brown tones. The, the more it dries, the less um, it's going to bleed because it's going to be much more 
easy to manipulate. I'm taking my yellow and I feel like this needs a little bit more paint up in here because I felt like I got this weird white area. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that and remove it at the same time. I know that might make sense, but mine went down in a V and I want it kind of more of a circle. So I'll just paint it and then remove some of it with the paper towel as we go here. And it gives that more hazy look to it because it was more coming down like this in a V and I'm just going to add the water and just take the paper towel and fix that. So I'm just going to keep adding these simple strokes going upward um, to get this just like hazy wheat effect. And I'll just keep going in here and I'll add in some color tones and just splotch them in actually. You see that? Just playing around with adding some darker tones. And when this dries, we're going to get more detailed with the wheat itself. But right now we're just splotching in some color. See? Just throwing in some color. And as it's, see now it's completely damp. We can create the darker reddish brown. Might add a little black to that. I'm running out of my Van Dyke brown, so I'm gonna add some more Van Dyke brown in here. Okay, there we go. So again, I'm gonna get, since much thicker paint, less water. I'm testing out the bleed on it. I want it to bleed a little bit, but not too much. So I'm getting skinnier lines going upward, just like that. And then crisscross them. And as they dry, I'll get even more detailed with the actual wheat. A lot of noises around my studio today. <laughs> Sorry guys for all the noisy distractions. But see how it's just building the, the brown colors? We're building and building and building this wheat. And go in like this with some darker deep brown color. And whatnot. Okay, so it's still damp. And you know, if you feel like this got all too crazy, and you want to go and take some Hey, take some paint out. You can take some paint out. Just remove it. It feels like, oh, it's gotten too, too much paint. I just take a paper towel and lift up some of this color and some of the areas. If you want to do that. It has a nice little texture to it too, also. I like to play around with that sometimes. If while it's still damp, you can't do this when it's dry. See, and it has that dry brush look to it. Just taking up some paint. Still has that mystical quality to it. So, getting a little bit darker again. Less paint, I mean less water. And I'm making these strokes. I'm going to add in some more lines that make it look just like wheat. But as I've said, I'm going in and getting it darker and darker. I've decided to add just a teeny bit of black to some of these areas. Just keep playing around with stroke. A little dark black there. Trying to get that brown really dark. And then you could add, take the brush. So the wheat will have the little spikes on the side of it. And basically take your brush and go like this little damp, like that. And those will be fuzzy because it's still damp. 
We're doing some little strokes right next to that stem we put in here. It's not going to bleed as much now because we have the paper is starting to dry. We could put another one way up here. And just put these little strokes next to the stem for like wheat. And as the paper starts to dry, it will bleed, but it won't bleed as much. So you'll have these softened lines, which are really pretty. And then you can go back on top of those and put in real intense detail lines. These are nice and soft right now. And then see this area is dry and it has a little more detailed line effect. And the other half is softer. It's really pretty. Again, watch, you'll see. I'll take the dark stem here. This is dry. Because we just put that paper towel, remember? And so this is going to be much more detailed looking. And if you want a little golden color, get some of that gold brown in this area that's dry. Little wheat. That part is dry, so you can go in with this yellow golden color right up to the tippy, right where the sun would be, and just wisp in that wheat. Same thing over in here. Just go like that. And now we're going to get even darker again with this dark. I'm just going to make these simple little strokes going up. Adding this wheat in the really dark shade. See, I'm just pushing the strokes around like this. It's not supposed to be like super serious. I've added some black to this brown to get it really dark and I'll put some down here. Dark strokes of the wheat. It's supposed to be like really I kind of like atmospheric, very loose. And in the end we're gonna do even something more fun. So you're going to just keep doing this until you feel you've created what you're looking for. Still bleeding a little bit over here, it's a little wetter on this side. So I might have to lift up some of that color. It's just bleeding a little bit. Don't want it to bleed too much. Still damp. So you got that atmospheric look, right? It's kind of cool. And you go up in here, a little few more up in here. Play around with it. You know, everything. I would, you know, we might have to do this a couple of times because it. Each time is going to be totally different. You know what I mean? It's kind of darker on this side, but you get that atmospheric look of wheat growing in like really small ones back here. If you want to do that, and add some golden color in here. Now at this point, 
as you're doing all this. If you want to go in and add some fun splatter, which I always say is fun to do, right? I'll show you how that would look. Remember that splatter one that I've done that's the wildflower just splattering? Kind of in that same vein, I'm going and adding some darker ones down here. And crisscross it and put some over here. Okay, I think I'm kind of getting where I want to be. So you can take your deep, dark, blackish brown and just take a little splatter. More towards the bottom and at the top. You might want to do more golden color, like a golden brown. Not too much though. You don't want to overdo it. Just a little, just a little splatter. Okay, so we're going to let this dry and then come in and do some super detail. Okay, so now that that's dry, I'm going to go and take my eight long round brush and I'm going to get some really dark, deep brown of paint again. Very little water. And we can go in and add some real fine details. So you can have like one particular wheat grab some more paint. Didn't mix up enough. Just coming up the middle here and just put a bunch of sprays. Real detailed sprays coming off of that. Nice and dark, right? And then kind of one up in here. Kind of going over the one we had before, but pretty dark spray. And then another one over in here. And then I'm gonna add some like white gouache accents. So I've got this dark spray. Put another one over in here. back in and add some details. So these ones up over in here. And up and over in here, around here, you know, play around with where you want them. All right, and clean up our brush. And I have just a simple, um, I have whole Holbein white gouache, but this is my white gouache. Just get a little water, not too much. And I'm just gonna like put some next to the sprays on the ends. It's just gonna highlight them just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much. Kind of makes them glisten, I guess. I put little dots next to it too, just for like little textural details. See, little dots up in here, and these ones over in here. Just little highlights. Don't want to go overboard with it, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much, just a teeny bit. 
You could splatter the white also if you wanted to. And you could actually mix the white with some of the watercolor, like the yellow I have here, and add that highlight to some of these, the golden yellow. And you get this other highlight. And like I said, if you want to go in, go a little crazy, you can take that gouache, water it down. This is when you get a little bit loose and you can splatter in some white. Just a little bit, like I said, not too much. You don't want to go overboard. Just in a few areas. And take some of that white yellow gouache and do the same thing. I mean, sorry, yellow paint and add it to the white gouache. And you got that golden tone. And there you go. I'm gonna add a little yellow down here. So it's kind of like similar to the splatter, but less splatter. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And then we have, we'll remove our tape. If I can ever get mine off. There we go. Our golden wheat field. A lot of people do these. They're fun, simple, easy. You saw how I just moved those brush strokes up. Wet on wet, wet on damp. You know, this pretty nice, these little bit splatter details. You could also add some nice gold paint to it. That would be really pretty also. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon channel. I have exclusive tutorials there weekly. And hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.